guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be making, that is the three ring binder pencil case. So these have been around for years and years and they are still requested by teachers today. So today we will be making one of these guys. I've made two here to show you. For this pencil case we do have um, two pouches. One is a vinyl pouch see-through and then we have um, another one that is the full size. Um, this really is a fun pattern because it does give you the opportunity to personalize it. So for instance this one I actually used some Mario cotton print. I put some medium weight interfacing on it and then that is the lining of my pouch. But you can have so much fun with that little pocket that you could put a personalized maybe name or vinyl, you know, do something fun with your Cricut. So this one is actually made out of a waterproof canvas which adds to the durability of it because of course, you know, you're going to be throwing this in your backpack if god forbid you decide to dump your entire water bottle or something like that inside of it, then it'll be very easy to clean. So definitely recommend making it out of some sort of uh, canvas, denim, something heavyweight. Um, so on the inside, the waterproof really adds that, you know, plasticky sort of just typical backpack material, you know, but it's a lot, it's a lot better quality than that backpack material you'll find in the stores. So, um, so yeah, so as always, the measurements will be located over the blog, which will be down below. But if you would like to find the PDF version on how to make this, I do have that over at the Patreon. So if you're looking for a way to support this channel, um, you can definitely head over to Patreon and support that way. So over there, I do offer the patterns um, for free, the PDF patterns. So you're not able to get that anywhere on the website. So you can only find it. It is exclusive to Patreon over there. So I hope that you um, definitely head over there and um, take advantage of all the patterns that I will be posting for free. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions. And let's just get straight into it. Okay, so we are just going to place out all of our pieces so we know which ones we have. If you haven't already, go over to the blog, get all the measurements, cut all, all your pieces, and we can sew together. So I am using a 16 gauge vinyl, but anything over 10, even if you can find some vinyl bags, you know, the ones that they put the the sheets in those you can cut those up um, we're gonna have two zippers I'm just using regular standard zippers one is about nine inches and the other one is at least 11 inches I'm going to be using 5 8 grommet but anything that's big enough that can go on a, a ring on a binder um, will work just fine and this is my grommet setter um, if you have something heavier duty then that works well as well but this is all I have it's just an old-fashioned manual uh, use a hammer with it so the first thing we're going to do is install the smaller zipper on the top of our vinyl piece so I'm going to place that with the zipper pull down and on the left side of the vinyl piece and I will clip that into place and we're just going to do a straight stitch right along here. I like to switch my machine over to a zipper foot. If you're new to zipper feet, as always, I have the link in the information icon. You can go over there and learn about zipper feet. They come with most machines. Um, this is a brother machine and it came with a little pack of feet. So I was able to find my zipper foot in there and you can learn all about it. It's a great little foot and it helps you get nice and close to your zipper teeth. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold over the vinyl and we're going to do a top stitch over top. Now I didn't mention before, but I like to up my stitch length to about a three and that's just because it is vinyl and if you make your stitches a little too close together, um, you are perforating it so you don't want to... Um, basically have it tear when you go to use it. So just make it a little bit wider and it will stay nice and securely. So now we're going to take our red fabric which is the lining of that vinyl pouch and like I said before there is an awesome opportunity to add a fun little pop of print or add some custom vinyl. So I am using my waterproof canvas for this. 
But if you are using a cotton fabric, then I would definitely suggest putting uh, a nice heavy duty interfacing on the back like a decoville or um, just a heavyweight interfacing. So now I'm going to do a straight stitch again and we're going to attach this onto the other side of the zipper and um, we did have that right sides facing up so we could see it. So we just are going to leave it at that and we're going to start to install the side panels of the zipper pouch. I'm just going to snip off the excess zipper and then I'm going to go ahead and place the side pieces with the right sides down on both sides of the vinyl pouch. And we're just going to clip that into place. And this is a very square project so we have to be very mindful that everything is as straight as we can possibly get it. Um, the first pouch probably won't turn out straight but as you make them they will become straighter as you go. So I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're going to go straight down both sides. And the great thing about this pattern is it's very easy to fix. So even if you wanted to cut your pattern pieces a quarter of an inch larger and then as you go you're just going to keep squaring up the uh, the project then it's okay all that little cut off edge are, is all gonna you know it'll all go the way you need it to go <laughs> so now that we've done both sides we're gonna fold those pieces over and we're gonna do a top stitch I do it about an eighth of an inch away and I usually up that stitch length to a three um, for the majority of the project, I do use a 2.5 stitch length, but when I am doing top stitching and when I am um, sewing on the vinyl, then I do a 3 stitch length. So this is what I'm talking about before when I said that I square up my project. So just to make sure everything is straight, I'll just bring a ruler and my rotary cutter and then I'll just square it up make it sure that you know everything is nice and even so if things are hanging off the edge it's totally okay you can just easily cut it right off um, so I do do this several times while making the pouch um, now the next thing we're going to do is attach the top and the bottom the top piece is going to be the smallest strip of fabric and the bottom piece is going to be the largest piece of fabric if that makes sense without giving away the measurements so we're just going to place those with the right sides down and then clip those to the top and bottom and again we'll do that quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we will fold it over and do a top stitch. So as you can see I did make these pieces just a little bit bigger and that's why there's a little bit hanging off the edge. So it's just to give myself a little bit of room for error and then my finished you know finished pro project won't be um, as small because you want to keep it a good size. You want to make sure that there's enough room for the grommet so that you can insert it into a binder. Um, the finished measurements of this bit of this little pouch is going to be about nine inches by 11 inches okay so we're just going to do that top stitch and i'm still going to use my zipper foot on this top stitch but i use my regular foot on the bottom so this is how it is looking and i again squared it up nicely and now we can install our last zipper um, the zipper is very long but that's okay because I will just snip off the excess and I put that with the zipper pulled down and on the left hand side again and we'll do a straight stitch along those zipper teeth and we'll fold the zipper up and again do a top stitch right along here and 
and then we're just gonna install the last strip of fabric to the other side of our zipper and then we will basically be done with the front panel so it's super easy to make you can make a bunch of these in a row especially if your kids need multiple ones for you know different subjects I really enjoy this pouch and I think my kids will use these a lot in the future so again we're just gonna do a straight stitch along the zipper teeth I love using the waterproof canvas it makes things go a lot easier because you just you have that stability in the fabric but if I was using a cotton or if I was using something like a canvas then I would probably be pressing a lot of my seams um, just being very careful not to press the vinyl and then accidentally <laughs> melting it okay so now we're done with the front panel we can cut off any excess zipper and then we can place our um, our back panel on so just making sure you know the finish measurements of the front panel could be a little different than the last or the back panel so of course just square it all up again one last time um, and now we're just going to clip everything into place trying to make sure everything is as square and as lined up as possible and now you have a few options here here I am going to be doing a 1 8 inch seam allowance um, but if you're not comfortable doing that then you can do a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then trim off any excess um, but basically what we're going to do is it's kind of like a French seam where we're going to be doing the the first seam and then we will flip the pouch right side out do a top stitch over top and that's going to encase those raw edges so you're not going to see them so like I said I'm gonna do that 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then um, I shouldn't have too much to cut off but of course it will affect your seam allowance or not your seam allowance but it will affect the finished product measurements if you were to do a quarter of an inch and then cut some of it off it won't make a huge difference in the end like you'll still be able to get your grommets on so it's up to you I'm just gonna snip off the corners just to reduce the bulk and I did have a little bit to cut off and now we are going to open up our zipper and your zipper should already be open a little bit from when you you know did the sewed on that back panel and we're just gonna poke out all the corners I did use a pen here to uh to help aid in that and any of the tools that I use in this proje project project um, everything will be listed over at the blog post and of course um, there will be Amazon affiliate links so that will also help to support my channel if you want to go over there and do a little bit of shopping and again I appreciate anyone who um, does go over to the patreon and support um, I made a beautiful PDF for this if you're interested because I know there's a lot of people who have different learning styles I'm a very visual person but I know that a lot of people enjoy having you know um, a document so that they can just kind of flip through it on their own time so now I'm just doing that quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and that is encasing the raw edges and then you'll be pretty much done except for the grommets we still we still need to install the grommets and you might see me miter the corner with my stitching and that's just because I have a very beginner machine and um, if it's too bulky in the corners then it'll just bend the needle or something so it's okay if you want to just kind of jet over the corner there um, I still think it looks pretty good okay so now we're just gonna install our grommets so like I said before I think there are 5 8 or 11 millimeters 
Um, so you can measure them. Um, they measure about five and a quarter spacing from center of grommet to center of grommet. Um, or you can just cheat like I did and get a piece of paper and just lay that on top and use chalk to mark them out. Now I have a hole punch that I got over at the hardware store. I think it's for like leather or metal or something like that, but um, it works great. It's basically the same one you can get in the craft store, but a lot cheaper. Um, but it does help. It's just not big enough for these big grommets. So I try to kind of make the hole bigger and then I use my scissors and it's just a whole process. So, but I do know that this um, little grommet setter set you can get at um, like a regular store. They're like tarp grommets. So look in the camping section and they'll give you the snap setter. And I think there's even a piece there that will punch the hole also. So super easy and um, this is how it goes in pretty straightforward I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to share it with your friends and like comment subscribe and all that stuff and thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next tutorial bye guys